Tommy Sinclair. I'm a beekeeper. I've been keeping bees for about 20 years, and I'm just going to speak a little bit about beekeeping and also about some of the challenges we face. Now, if you see me looking, are we started? Yeah. Oh, are we started? Okay, so the bees you send do prosper well. These were the sentiments of Robert Rich back in 1616 in a letter that he sent to his brother. This was probably... Uh, the first um, signs of beekeeping on the island. And except for the last five years, uh, the bees have continued to, to prosper well. This is a typical hive here. Uh, the hive, uh, you'll see there's a top uh, cover, a bottom board or a landing board. This box here is called the hive body. This is where the queen uh, lives and lays her eggs. And these two boxes here are called honey supers. This is where the nectar is stored and converted into honey. This is also uh, a hive, but this is a feral hive. This is probably the result of a uh, hive nearby that got too congested, and because of that, uh, it swarms. It, they, they create a new queen. The old queen takes off with half the, uh, the, half the bees. Uh, we like to try and catch these uh, swarms because this is how we make our increases uh, in our numbers. And this is a typical apiary. Apiary is just another name for a bee yard. So after we catch our swarms, uh, we put them in a hive and we put them in a bee yard. Uh, you see that the hives are located above ground. That's actually an anti-toad device because toads will actually sit in front of there and just eat bees all day if they could. <laughs> this is what we like to see when we go to a hive. You open a hive and you take out a frame and it's just full of bees. Uh, when you see a lot of bees like that, it usually indicates a good healthy hive. Uh, a hive that is really healthy could have anywhere from 50 to 80,000 bees in there. The more bees you have, the more potential of, uh, of honey in the end. There's all, only one queen. Most of the bees are female workers and a couple of drones. Now, bees will fly up to two miles to, uh, in search of nectar or pollen. Uh, when there's nothing around, when there's a dearth of that, they will find whatever they can. Uh, for instance, uh, these peaches or nectarines, uh, they're just having a field day uh, there. Okay, and if everything goes well, if we've had good weather, uh, if we haven't had any major hurricanes, it comes time to harvest our honey. And this is what we like to see. We we'll go to a hive, the boxes are stacked up high, and we can take off four to five uh, um, supers, honey supers. Uh, those honey supers can uh, probably weigh around 40 to 45 pounds, so it's a lot of work involved in it. And this is the end result. This is why we do it. This is the honey that we all enjoy. A good hive can give you about 150 pounds of honey uh, a year. Um, we have two main honey flows. One is in the summer around cup match and the other is in the fall around uh, end of September and October. Everything is, uh, was looking pretty good until September 2009 when this varroa mite, this little thing right there, was found or discovered in Bermuda by a local beekeeper. It's probably the most destructive uh, pest in the beekeeping world. Uh, they feed on the blood of the uh, bees. They also are vectors for different uh, diseases and viruses. Uh, it's a huge problem worldwide. We're not sure how it got here, but our best guess is it came in on a container or a piece of equipment somehow. We have tons of stuff that come through the Hamilton docks, and that's how we think it got here. One thing we know in a short time afterwards, it was located all over the island, so it wasn't just in the parish that we found it, but it was uh, island-wide. So we decided, uh, or some beekeepers decided to treat. Uh, no one really wanted to use harsh chemicals, so they opted for uh, on an organic treatment. Uh, this is formic acid strips. You put those strips on top of the, uh, the hive body or the brood chamber, and the, the fumes is what, uh, what kills the, uh, the, um, the mites. Uh, again, it's organic uh, treatment. However, we weren't uh, expecting the result. Uh, our bees have never been treated before, so when we closed up those boxes, uh, the bees just came uh, rushing out. Uh, they didn't want anything to do with uh, all those fumes in the hive. And that, that's typical. And eventually, in a day or so, they would normally make their way back in. But what was happening, as you can see, not only the bees, but uh, at that time, we had a really bad ant problem. Uh, and the ants literally went in by the tens of thousands, and they attacked the young larva. Uh, they got into the honey, they got into the pollen, and just destroyed everything. The bees didn't want to go back in at all. It was, uh, it was a sad sight. And, uh, you know, when we went to our bee yards, this is kind of what we would see, uh, just bees hanging on the outside, 
Now, it wasn't on every single hive that was treated. You know, we would get maybe two hives that would do this, and then two hives were okay, and another one, uh, the same thing, that the bees were uh, um, just, you know, not happy at all. And what ended up happening is the bees just took to, uh, took to the air. They didn't uh, hang around. They just swarmed. Uh, and, you know, sometimes they swarm up high in a tree, sometimes they swarm low. Uh, if we were lucky, we were able to catch them again and start over. However, all the, uh, the honey, the frames, and all that stuff was ruined by the ants. So it really was kind of starting uh, all over again. And this is kind of what we started to see. Uh, we would see uh, a queen bee here and just a handful of bees. Uh, instead of seeing um, thousands of bees, we were just, you know, the numbers were really starting to dwindle. Uh, and that was uh, of major concern for us because, you know, when a hive gets too low, uh, the population gets too low, uh, it will just end up uh, dying off just because it can't support itself. The other thing we started to see was some of the, uh, the symptoms of the viruses. Uh, that's been spread by uh, the um, varroa mite. And this is called deformed wing virus. And you can see why all the wings are all, look like they're all wrinkled up. And actually right there, you can see a, a, a mite right there on that bee there. So this is really concerning because this is, no, you really know you have a bad problem when you start seeing those. In addition to the loss of bees and, and honey uh, is the pollination aspect because bees are very important for pollination of our crops, our flowers, our trees. And we already uh, heard from different farmers saying that some of their crops, especially their cucurbits, their cucumbers, their pumpkins, uh, just weren't uh, cropping like they should. So we decided that we're looking to other uh, methods that we can kind of control this. Uh, this gentleman here, uh, his name is Dr. John Harbo. Uh, he's a scientist uh, in the U.S., a bee researcher, and he's developed uh, a bee that has some resistance to, uh, uh, to the varroa mite uh, through a, a genetic trait or a hygienic trait where they can detect the varroa mite and actually get the mite and deposit it outside the hive. If we don't do anything soon, this is what we're going to have. This is one beekeeper, and this is his yard. It's full of... Uh, empty hives. These typically would be full of bees. Now they're not. Prior to 2009, we had about 350 hives on the island. Today we probably have around 125 left. So it's, it's a serious problem, one that we're looking into. I think that's the end of my presentation. Now I don't want to say everything is doom and gloom and because beekeeping is, uh, you know, a fantastic, uh, sorry? Oh, f it's a, a great uh, hobby to get into. So don't be discouraged if you are interested. Don't worry. Yes? Yeah. Um, how do you determine what the uh, queen bee looks like? I was trying to, to figure queen, that out. The queen, well, unfortunately, we can't go back, but her body is much longer uh, and thinner. Uh, no, no, it, they, they do have stripes as well. It's just her abdomen is much longer because she has to reach down in a cell to deposit an egg. So she is a, a, a bigger, longer um, bee. Yeah. Oh, yes, Dee? What are the mechanics of harvesting the honey? How does, why does the box or the frame collect honey? How do you harvest it and turn it into the liquid that we see in a bottle, please? Well, inside those boxes are, are frames, and all the frames are uh, you can remove. Uh, and all the, uh, the frames of the wax, uh, is there's a wax coating uh, that seals in the, the honey. And you literally take a hot knife or whatever, and you cut the outer wax off. You put it in an extractor, and you spin it really fast. Uh, years ago, it was a manual extractor. Most people have electric extractors now. And just the centrifugal, centrifugal force just forces the honey out, and it just collects. No, no, no. There's no, there's no processing. No, no. And most, uh, most beekeepers don't process their honey. If there's any heating involved, it's just heating of the honey when it comes out, so it flows a little faster. There's no uh, pasteurization of uh, local honey. In yeah, a in the, uh, hi, oh, Tommy. sorry. It's, oh. Where am Me? I? Okay. Hi, oh. Tommy. Um, a lot of times you read online internationally about the bee crisis globally and it seems like there's a lot of attention put on pesticides and GMOs, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. It seems like we have a specific mite issue or are these other things impacting our bee population as well? Well, that's a good question and we really don't know for sure. Um, all this, the problem started after the introduction of mites. But uh, what they're finding with this colony collapse disorder, what they're seeing around the world, it's not one thing. It's not these neonicotinoids, treated seeds, or uh, chemicals. Uh, it's a combination of, of all of them acting together. And it becomes like a, I don't know, like a lethal cocktail when you, know, you might have poor nutrition, uh, you know, the bees are under stress. 
you have mites attacking you, uh, then you have uh, pesticides being applied. So all of them together is probably what's accounting for that. There's billions of dollars being spent every year on research, and there's nothing that's conclusive yet, except that you know they know it's it, it seems to be a bunch of things that's happening. Okay, we'll take one more question here because it's a little boy. <laughs> Can you? It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> what? Okay. Well, I think I can, sir. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you.